Well, Coach, uh, congrats. You're now officially part of the War on I-4 rivalry with your first two wins in the rivalry. A pretty pretty memorable day. This is a day that with this group, you know, when you have anniversaries years from now, they're going to remember this day in general. Just describe this day as a whole to win two games against a great team that you're the rivals and, and played at the level that you did and winning in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think that I just – told the team in the beginning, like, I'm going to, I'm going to be aggressive and you guys have to be ready to go and follow and be expect the unexpected. And you know what they did it. So, um, I mean, we squeezed with two strikes and, uh, we squeezed with bases loaded and, um, you know, whatever it takes to beat a very good pitcher, um, and a, and a good team. But, uh, I, I think that, you know, the fans and everybody else got to see a, a little piece of us and, we still have more to prove where we haven't shown our complete game yet. So you win the first game in a walk-off and then come out dominant in game two. Do you feel like the walk-off really energized you going into the next game? I do. I mean, it gives you confidence to beat a team like that, especially that pitcher on the mound. And, um, you know, it's uh, when you feel good and you feel that, that confidence, like you said, and, um, hard to beat this team when they believe and they have a an idea in their heads very difficult to beat this group you made some changes to the lineup you went more of the small ball you know we've talked so much this year about the offense and the power but as you've talked about you have so many versatility on offense and you showed that today going the small ball route in elise Falpe. an amazing day for her the double in the seventh inning with one out against court really started that comeback she was phenomenal in the two days just talk about her setting the tone at the top of the order and just going with the small ball against cork in game one yeah um you know i I think that she's kind of paid her due since she's been here and uh, maybe hasn't gotten the, the amount of time playing time that I wanted her to have, or she's wanted to have just because we had so many strong players start off um, at the beginning of the year and she grinded it out and it has shown, I mean, she can do it all. She's a true triple threat. Um, just as every, just as USF was surprised that she was swinging away. So was I, I mean, she had the green light to do what she wanted and um I, I told Jules at the and in her at bat right before that I said swing to win a game, and uh, she said, "Well, that's all I did. I just heard you say that, and that's what I did." So, I mean, can't can't get too mad at that. But um, has the ability to to do it all and, and plays with a lot of passion. And this game's very personal to her. So, um, I love um, her being there and in, in that leadoff spot and uh, how our team responds to that. Describe what the energy was like in dugout when Takia hit that three-run homer, her first of the season, just essentially iced the game, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the team loves Kia. She is um, the heart of this team. She is, you know, the, the worker. She's our defensive player. So when our defensive player stays in the game and um, hits in Shannon Doherty's spot and gets hit and hits a home run, uh, that's a big deal. Uh, and they recognized it. And, you know, at that point, again, no one can stop them. Jada Cody, I don't know what other words we could describe her. She's been amazing. She's been amazing all conference. She's been amazing all year. But today she just put on a clinic, the squeeze play to execute this game winning squeeze play with two, you know, it's not easy to do. She did that, showed off her gloves. She caught Gianna Mancha. She played third. She could steal bases, driving in runs. I mean, she did it all. Just talk about her. It was just an amazing player that's just growing before her eyes. It's hard to believe how young she is. She doesn't play like a youngster. Yeah, yeah. I've said it before. I think that she is a contender for um, the most valuable player in our, and the best player in our conference. Um, you know, not only our team, but in our conference. And I say that because she can do it all. It doesn't matter what you need or what the game um, requires of you. She's our spark plug. Um, and, you know, again, she's a freshman still. Um, you know, it may say sophomore on there, but I've, whatever, whatever you call it, um, this is her first conference go. So uh, she's got three more years left to, uh, you know, keep developing. And I thought she was good last year and she's even better this year. So she's going to be one of those that follows like the Aaliyah Whites of the world where she's going to bring something new every year to, to get that edge. What 
what were some of the things that felt really different about today versus last night? Uh, definitely our approach and our energy. Um, you know, last night, I think that they played and were comp we were we played a competitive game against a decent team or a good team. Um, today we played for something. Um, and that's been the difference. I think the last couple of games, we haven't had that purpose. It's, it's kind of been a little bit of, you know, well, there. We, when you play for something, there's something to lose. And um, we haven't really been in that position here for a while. Uh, and we have an opportunity, you know, to lock in uh, regional votes to get into regionals and postseason. And we have an opportunity to put ourselves in a really good spot for conference tournament seating. Um, and that's basically, I was pretty honest with them. Like, you got a lot going on tomorrow. You, you're trying to protect the plex for the seniors. You're trying to uh, place yourself in second place of the of the conference so that you get uh, the seven seed uh, to play against. And instead of hiding from it and trying to go about it, I just threw it right at them. And I said, now it's up to you how you respond. Um, and they're, they're big girls, and they want that honest truth. And, um, you know, they're going to take it take it whether they what with that, whatever approach that they take um they're going to own it so um it's my job to make sure that they're fully prepared and stay out of their own way that comeback win against georgina court it's the first time that someone's beaten georgina court when she's had a lead in a game since the 2019 regionals in tallahassee when she lost to south carolina you're the first team to have knocked her off and scored the most runs in conference against her in the last couple of years as well and that set the tone for Aaliyah in the second game and you know it's very fitting Aaliyah closing that game out against a school that she lived you know she grew up 15 20 minutes away with her incredible career here at the complex setting all the records one hitter against her rival and denying them of a conference regular season title. That's pretty good for Aaliyah's legacy there. That sure is. Gosh. Well, you always come up with the fun facts, Elo, and um, that that's an awesome one. But again, you know, the girls were when we're in the game and in the moment, um, they're they're just being competitive and, and us coaches, too. And so love to hear those things, because that just tells them that there's so much more than what we've already accomplished here and how exciting. Um, so our job is to not see that as uh, something that, again, gets in our way or is like a, a negative challenge. It's more of a, a vision of this is what we could do and this is who we could be. And we're, we have every capability of doing that. So awesome to hear those stats. And like you said, Aaliyah White, or, you know, Cork's a good pitcher, and um, we, we talk about her a lot, but we've got Aaliyah White, and she's just as great and um, has done some phenomenal things here, and the team plays behind her, man. So I'm excited to see um, her do it one last, last time at the Plex tomorrow. Looking ahead to tomorrow, what what do you anticipate here? Regular season finale, emotion, senior day, emotions are high. Just what are you expecting? Well, I expect them to come out and compete and play this game and lock in second place. Like I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm a coach, so I don't know all the the numbers and the win percentage and all of that. But I think if we win tomorrow, we do a pretty good job of locking ourselves into a good seed. Um, and that's their that's their job. All that other stuff. Um, if that affects the way we play, um, then we don't belong in that top seed, you know, so they're, they're competitors, they're, they're athletes, that's how they should be playing. Um, and if they play anything less than that, then they're not bringing their best. And um, this game, our school, our institution, our fans, and even ourselves um, deserves for us to bring our best tomorrow. With the two wins today now, this team has more is the most wins for a UCF team since 2016 when the because they made the tournament that year. That's the last time we made the tournament. So that's a good uh, comparison there. But Jasmine as far as and Kira Clarkowski, we cannot leave here before talking about those two. And Kira with her offense. We've talked about her defense. She's the only player in the history of the program to have not made an error in more than one season. She's on the verge of possibly doing that three times in her career. But her offense was tremendous. She's having her best year offensively. And then Jasmine tying the school record for most doubles in a single season with a couple doubles today, including that two RBI double in the second. Talk about those two and the, and the growth you've seen from those two from when you first took over and met them to where they are now. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, I, I'd love to take a ton of credit for what they're doing. Um, I think the, the growth part, like you said, uh, those two are incredible athletes, uh, very, very talented. Kira is by far um, a top level, high level athlete. Uh, and, and Jazz, her hands and her ability to hit any pitch up there. I mean, it's just, it's great stuff. Um, I think the biggest thing is them developing the mindset and understanding like you have players that are, are so talented and so good that, you know, when they don't succeed, it wears on them. And that's been the biggest thing is, well, okay. I mean, you're, you're not going to go 10 for 10. Like that's a, you know, great hitters, all, uh, all Americans and professional athletes that get paid to do this for a living, um, get out six to seven times uh, in 10 at bats. And so you have to be able to deal with that. And the elite players are able to deal with that. And that's the change that I've seen with them is being able to deal with that and really dialing in and honing in on their approach. You know, it, it, we don't, we're not grading the result and the outcome. We are grading how we attack and how we approach. And that's going to continue to have to be a factor for this program um, to go in and, and be a top 25 team year in and year out, because it's not an easy journey for us. Um, you have all things against us, um, and not much going in our way except for us. Right. So, um, in order to keep, continue to keep putting us on the map and keep putting us in the conversation, you, UCF being in the conversation, um, it takes people like that to make those adjustments. And so I love how they're leaving this program um, better than they found it, and that's what they're supposed to do.